Can you imagine what would your life be like if you stop using your smartphone, smartwatch, iPod, iPad, and all electronic devices? Well, we might think it's a stupid question, but actually getting rid of them would be good for our climate. We always think climate change should blame to factories, cars, airplanes, but climate change can easily mean something else. Our small devices consume 6% of the global energy production. Same with electric vehicles. Well, I mean, not only the devices you see, but also countless sensors hidden everywhere. Like in this building, there are easily more than 1,000 sensors. So the only answer to my question is, we just cannot get rid of small devices. But the point is, they are not emission-free. Battery is the reason. Our devices need batteries for electricity, but we have to charge them from mains power, which are mostly not emission-free. A battery will die. Dead batteries are very toxic to the environment. Recycling can be difficult and costly, so the true cost of using batteries is very high. I want to find a sustainable way to replace batteries. As a material scientist, I will achieve this at the very ultimate point, the material. I will create a new material, efficiently converting environmental energy like sunlight, heat, movement into electricity. We do have techniques for these jobs, but only individually and separately. I'm sorry to say, current technologies are not good enough to power small devices. The novelty of my material is the combination of all technologies into just a single piece of material. This means we don't need to charge our devices anymore, long-term operation will be super cheap, and it's environmentally friendly. My method is that I will take a material which is sensitive to movement, technically piezoelectrics, but don't worry about the term. This is like mother's gene. I will then selectively change the chemical elements using, say, nickel and silver. This is like getting father's gene. By carefully choosing the parents, I can teach the next generation material to learn also to be sensitive to light and heat. The feasibility of my method is proven in my previous works. If I would win the prize, I will hire researchers and build a team to speed up my research progress. Within five years, batteries will just start to step down from the dominant position. This means we will have 70% emission reduction from batteries. Thank you. Thank you, Young. Thank you. That was some next level stuff. I'd really like to see my telephone work like that. Yeah, well, that's the future. Timo Honkela, do you have a question for Young? Thank you. Very important area of development. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask, based on your basic research uh, results that are kind of potentially groundbreaking, how would you envision the collaboration research wise and then into the practical pra uh, pre-arm? Yeah, um, I think this kind of material, when it's developed, yeah, it's definitely a great question. It definitely needed collaboration between material science and also electronic engineering. So they must be combined, yeah, as because the signal coming out from the material, well, might be varying uh, based on the, uh, well, according to the different energy sources. Yeah, so you must regulate them. So when these things combine together, I think that will be a very uh, bright way to the future for the uh, practical application. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Young, and thank you, Timo.